edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never duplicated syntax news program, and more. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I've been Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And this week covers the Now Space seven day period ending on October 8th, 2022. We're going to have a choice selection of headlines, meme of the week, and we're going to have a special cognitive conjecture where someone actually attempts to read correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar in an actual foreign vessel in dry dock. And we're going to see how that goes. So let's dig into the headlines. First headline reads, Why does the Nobel Peace Prize often stir controversy? We have adverb why modifying does into a verb, adverb the modifying Nobel into an adjective, which is coloring peace into an adjective, which is coloring prize into a pronoun, followed by adverb often modifying stir into an adjective, ending on a pronoun. Because sentences or word groups may only end on verbs or pronouns. Cannot end on a modifier because there's nothing left to modify. I've also pointed out the particles of negation in this sentence. The vowel in front of a consonant and often. And the contra and control. As in contradiction. So on and so forth. It's a particle of negation. It's also in contract, by the way. That's why I hyphenate contract. C-O-N hyphen T-R-A-C-T. And it says, with the winner from 343 candidates set to be announced on Friday, a look at an award won by people as varied as Obama, Gorbachev, and Kissinger. And that, that's hilarious to me. I mean, not hilarious in like a ha-ha, it's funny, let's have a good laugh, uh, ha-ha. But it's funny in strange funny, because Obama, Gorbachev, and Kissinger have all taken part in, how shall we say, the machinations of the murder of many, many, many human beings, whether by the orders they gave, decisions they made, but yet uh, they've won the Nobel Peace Prize, huh? Interesting. By the way, we don't syntax this part because it's in italics, and italics function the same as uh, brackets or parentheses or quotations. Or cursive falls under the four-corner rule, rule of boxing. It's not on the page. Next headline comes from our how shall we say it, our uh, alternative news site, SOT.net, from their science and technology section. And it reads, Russian scientists discover huge asteroid heading towards Earth. So we have a series of adjectives, tangible contract adjectives, because an adjective can be no other condition or state other than tangible, culminating in the tangible contract pronoun heading, uh, something you can put in your back pocket of syntax hints, any word that ends in ing is probably going to be tangible contract. And then as we know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for yada, yada, yada. And in this case, it's adverb towards, which is now modifying earth into a dangling participle verb. Why is it a dangling participle verb? Because what is a verb, ladies and gentlemen? A verb is thinking. It's motion, it's action, but it's thinking. You have to think before you do anything. There has to be thinking involved. Well, as you see, this is the last word in the word group, so there's nothing left to think, uh, think about. So it's just dangling there. And there's not even a full stop there. 
And this isn't even an original SOT.net article. They've actually taken this from RT. And uh, they're saying they discovered a new asteroid. And that's one thing I remember about SOT.net is they just go on and on. They have sort of a fetish or a fascination with asteroids and meteors and things like that. Things that they say are out there somewhere, but never quite make it here. I mean, we're told that they've made it here, but I've never seen one. Doesn't mean it hasn't happened, I'm just saying I've never seen one. I've seen falling stars and shooting stars, which I guess falling stars would be considered the ones that go like this, and shooting stars are the ones that go like that. Uh, but that's about the extent of it. Next headline comes from the same website. Uh, but again, it's 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 a, an article that SOT took and sort of made it their own, but it was taken from another source, which was a site called Live Science. And it says, Government report claims cosmic and phantom UFOs are all over Ukraine's skies. Um, so we have... Adjective, adjective, pronoun, and what's interesting here is that we have those dollar store quotations, otherwise known as apostrophes being used as quotations, around cosmic and phantom. And what do we have? We have a space, apostrophe, cosmic, apostrophe, space, and space, apostrophe, phantom, apostrophe, space. So it's literally excessive spacing between claims and and, and 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 UFOs. Because cosmic and phantom fall under the four-corner rule, they're not to be considered. Therefore, and is standing by itself, uh, flanked on either side, on port side and starboard side, by excessive spacing, by double spacing. So it is a standalone pronoun. And then we start up again with the UFOs, which is an adjective. And then we have R, which is adjective. All, which is pronoun, followed by over, which is adverb. Ukraine, which is adjective. And skies, which is pronoun. So what is a UFO? Does anybody know what a UFO is? Well, astronomers observe dozens of objects that cannot be scientifically identified, which just means they don't know what they are. So that's what they are. They don't know what they are. Unidentified flying objects. It's pretty simple. Next headline comes from NPR. Florida officials are scrambling to limit Hurricane Ian's impact on the election. Now, this was a big news event this past week. Hurricane hitting in Florida causing a lot of uh, damage. But this headline is very interesting because the Florida officials are worried about the impact on the election. They're not so much worried about the loss of human life or the damage or people who who are have lost their homes, animals that have died and lost their homes and are suffering. No, no, they're worried about the election. There's quite a few particles of negation in this headline. We have adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, future tense, adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, well, it's all about the election because when we're talking about elections, we are most certainly talking about dollar signs. Next headline. Some Democrats push to punish Saudi Arabia after OPEC plus move to cut oil production. We have particle of negation, D-E, T-O, vowel in front of a consonant, and after OPEC, vowel in front of a consonant, move, M-O, is no contract, uh, T-O, and P-R-O. Adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, future tense, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, future tense, again, Adjective, adjective, pronoun. Now, this is interesting uh, that uh, some Democrats want to punish Saudi Arabia uh, because of this move to cut oil production, which too is future tense, so it hasn't happened yet, but they're making a move towards that, I guess. I guess the Democrats aren't worried about the uh, 
public executions and the uh, beheadings that Saudi Arabia does on a regular basis. They're more worried about uh, oil production. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, it's about uh, it's about that. Yeah. Next headline: Travelers coming to the U.S. from Uganda will face enhanced screening for Ebola. Adjective, adjective, pronoun, future tense, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, adjective, future tense, adjective, adjective, past tense, pronoun, adverb, verb. So let's just look through this sentence and identify the tangible contract words. Travelers would be tangible because, you know, only adjectives may only be tangible contract. Coming. Uh, U.S. would be tangible. Uganda is tangible. And it's an adjective. Will is tangible. Face, enhanced, screening, and Ebola. Those are all tangible. And then the rest are non-tangible. Meaning we don't have a tangible contract and they're not based on facts. Um, not much to say about this. Uh, I myself don't have much personal experience with what that is. I didn't put the E as a particle of negation in Ebola because it is a name. And names usually, you know, with the balance of honor and grace, get a pass. Because there are lots of people walking around with uh, vowels in front of consonants in their actual correct names. So we're not going to give them a hard time for that. Now let's move on to our syntax lesson. This one comes from Newsweek. And it says, Joe Biden warns of Armageddon dollar store quotations, says Putin not joking around about nuclear attack. Now let's look at some particles of negation here. We have that O. Uh, well, not as a negative condition to state right off the bat. ING, vowel in front of a consonant, vowel in front of a consonant. And... Syntaxing, we have the rule of four corners here where Armageddon falls under it. So this is basically one part Joe Biden warns of is one entire thing, which would be adjective, 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 pronoun. And then we don't syntax that because it's not there. So we start again with says Putin not joking. And we have says, adjective, Putin would be a pronoun, not, would be an adverb, joking would be a verb, about would be adverb, nuclear, adjective, and attack would be a pronoun. And if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, quite a few weeks back, I did mention this, that, uh, that other country over there is not to be trifled with. I mean, and, and I mentioned this too. How many military bases does Putin have surrounding the past tense United States border? How many? Now, how many United States military bases are on or near the Russian border? Now, you tell me Who's threatening whom? I mean, from an objective standpoint, just logically. Next up, we have some sad news. Uh, this past week, a country music legend passed away in Loretta Lynn. And as we see here, she's pictured in 1976 with her beloved husband, Du, who preceded her in death. Uh, she was definitely on the cutting edge of country, had some very controversial songs out there. Uh, I highly recommend checking her out. One of the greatest female country voices, uh, traditionalist, and uh, just a, a whole sad situation all around. Much respect to, to her and condolences to her family and loved ones and everyone that uh, are affected by this. Next up, we have Meme of the Week. And uh, I thought this one was pretty funny. I don't, people don't really think about this. 
but I would like you to think about it for a moment. And people get upset about Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Come on. <laughs> Bonus meme of the week. This one. This one is... is uh, it would be funny if it weren't uh, so such a horrible, horrible thing that happens. Um, I don't know what they do now, but uh, they used to not use any type of anesthesia or anything like that. They would just do it. They would just mutilate. Well, you know, the screaming ensued. And so, unfortunately, the child is subjected to trauma right off the bat. And you're seeing the results of it right now. Now we move on to cognitive conjecture. And a little background on this. It's a, a broadcast on A&E called Court Cam. Bizarre defendant goes on hyphen-filled rant. Now this is pretty cool to me because this is, okay, this is in 2016 or 2017 that this happened. And I have to say, I have to reveal this, I'm not going to say any specific names or anything, but I know the people who were involved in this back then. I have spoken with them, actually I know them very well. And, uh, well, not, I don't know the individual who's speaking. I don't know him. But I do know the individual who wrote the words that he's speaking. Who authored those words. And who is also with him during the times of these uh, court cases that, that have been going on down there at that time. So I'm very familiar with it. And I'm going to play it and give you my thoughts. And pay attention to the way the uh, narrator is so, so derisive. It's hilarious. For our next story, we head to Kauai County, Hawaii. The defendant is William Dennis, who's in court without a lawyer to face the charge of driving with a suspended license. Good morning. All eyes are on Dennis as he approaches. Clad in a blue robe and a headpiece. Okay. Now they're pointing out that he's clad in a blue robe and a headpiece. As if that's a big deal. Or that's something to point out when the guy sitting on the third tier is in a black robe or black dress. No less strange or different than this man. So, why would you need to point that out? He immediately addresses the court. Well, my knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the standing with this microphone. Sir? Of the documentation Sir? with the Sir? continuation of the evidence Sir? by this peaceful hyphen volition. Dennis has been rambling for more than 10 seconds now, but the judge allows him to continue. I don't think one can ramble for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a very short period of time. And one thing you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, about these places is that they try to control the cadence of what's going on. If you try to exercise any time, type of autonomy within their system, they will try to sweep you off your feet, take it away from you. They will try to rush you, hurry you up, knock you off your square. They will try to interfere with your breathing, your attention, and make it a very stressful environment so that you make mistakes. They make no mistake. They control the cadence of what's going on, or they try to. They try to. And if they can't do it psychologically, then they try to do it physically. Sir, unless you stand there, you're not being recorded anyway. So, so. the claimant's knowledge of the fact is with avoidance of the boxes and planes with this closed hyphen area hyphen court hyphen room by the unity hyphen consciousness. Dennis obviously has a thing for hyphens. So the judge attempts to get things back on track with a simple question. Okay, what's your name? What's your name? Now the, the narrator here is assuming that that's a question. But is it a question? Or is 
the little man in the black dress telling Dennis what his name is. Your name is what? What is your name? From my knowledge of my peaceful hyphen volition is with the avoidance of the perjury, with this participation of correct hyphen, sentence hyphen, structure hyphen, communication hyphen, passe hyphen, syntax hyphen, grammar. If you're counting at home, that is seven hyphens in just that answer alone. Thankfully, the judge steps in. Okay, well, we have a lot of folks waiting here, and I would hope that you would be courteous to the other human beings that are... So here's the point where they try and rush him through, try and give him a sense of urgency. When that guy right there with the little frilly black frocky beautiful i mean maybe sexy dress there is uh taking his own sweet time uh saying whatever he's saying they're in the courtroom today waiting their turn to be heard what do other human beings call you for my knowledge of the facts perhaps hoping to avoid an extended answer the prosecutor chimes in your Honor, the, okay. he is known to the state already as... William M. Dennis. Yes, as the Mr. Court, Dennis. The court will find that I know him from prior occasions. This is going to be dismissed with prejudice. However, in order for his driver's license to be reinstated, there are reinstatement requirements that he must fulfill at, the, at licensing. Okay, Mr. Dennis. First of all, I'll grant the motion. It will be dismissed with prejudice. Okay, thank you. Okay. I don't know what the narrator is going to say. But this is another thing that uh, individuals, folks, miss about correct sentence structure. When they say dismiss with prejudice, that's a win for Dennis. That's a win. Because he was brought in there on the charge of driving with a suspended license. Meaning he was driving with no license. With a suspended license. They suspended his license, meaning they suspended it. He doesn't have it. It's suspended. So... Allegedly, he's not supposed to be driving. Now, what is a license, ladies and gentlemen? It's just basically a permit you pay for to do something that would be otherwise illegal. And so it is illegal for him to drive on a suspended license. But he walks in here and starts using correct sentence structure. They don't immediately throw him out. He doesn't have an attorney. And within, what, a couple minutes, the judge dismisses it with prejudice? This is how it works. This is how the fiction goes on vacation. The Vasilis vacate. That's a win for Dennis. That's how it stops the trespass. No matter the level of correct sentence structure, because this was back in 2016 or 2017. Um, but quite obviously it works. Although the narrator would probably want to lead you to believe otherwise. Dismissed with prejudice means the case is permanently over. Done. Exactly. So Dennis can't be charged for that crime anymore because there is no crime. The judge dismissed it. He was originally brought in there to be held accountable for driving on a suspended license. To be fined or put in prison or whatever. But no, the judge threw it out. Finished. But Dennis would like to keep going. For my, for my knowledge of my peaceful hyphen volition is with this calling of the cooperation with the human hyphen beings of this court hyphen room, with the creation of a sanctuary, with the purpose of the knowledge hyphen, sharing, comma, mind hyphen, body hyphen, healing in organic hyphen, food hyphen, growing with the free cost of the people, with the public. Mr. Dennis, I believe... Did you hear what he just said? He's calling for a creation of a sanctuary for peaceful people of like minds to be healthy and eat organic food and grow organic food. A sanctuary. I mean, what's not to like about that? The state is being very patient and tolerant with you. You're free to go. 
It seems everyone wants this case over. That is, except for the defendant. To my knowledge of my peaceful hyphen volition. Because he knows that they're not going to do anything to him. Or if he, if he, he doesn't care. Now, the mechanics of using correct side structure in court, this isn't quite um, how I would suggest someone do it. Because Dennis is participating with the court. Dennis has not taken jurisdiction over the court. He has not taken, he has not, uh, how can I say this? He has not established the flag of the land during the time of the contract. He has not established that jurisdiction. He has not um, become a steward of the well of the court. He hasn't done that. What he's doing is he's using correct sentence structure. Uh, after he voided all the boxes and planes, now he's talking, he, he's giving jurisdiction to the foreign vessel, trying to meet them. I guess it apparently seems on some sort of common ground, which is, you can't really do that. But I mean, it's successful for him what he's doing, and he obviously knows they can't touch him now. So he's going to continue saying what he has to say. Although I'm sure it's not something that the state is going to acknowledge or have anything to do with. They just want to get that guy out of there and move on with their, their little fiction uh, soap operas. He's with this calling of the cooperation Sir? with the human Sir? hyphen beings of this court hyphen room. You're being disrespectful. The creation of Dennis can't quite see the gift he's been given and throws out a few more hyphens. Mind hyphen, body hyphen, healing and organic hyphen, food hyphen, growing. Sir, the free of the cost please, with the please have a seat at the front. Oh. The cost please. With the it takes some assistance from the bailiff for Dennis to get the message. But on his way back to the gallery, he gets a few more hyphens in just for good measure. Bail hyphen livery by the correct hyphen sentence hyphen structure hyphen communication hyphen passe hyphen syntax hyphen grammar. What's your takeaway from that, ladies and gentlemen? How do you feel about that? I guess, you know, I'm kind of biased in that since I do know uh, some of the individuals that were involved in that case and I know them very well um, I am biased towards it and I find it humorous and I also find that it's uh, it's a win now if that individual had gone in there and claimed the well of the court what would have happened we don't know can't really say but what I can say is that is what that is one way that you could credential a win using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. In that, as soon as he began speaking it, the judge just dismissed it and wanted to get him out of there. The other individual, the prosecutor, whomever, was trying to after the judge dismissed it, was trying to say things like, well, in order for him to have his license reinstated, we, he needs to do this, that, and the third. Uh, Dennis didn't care about that. Dennis was there not... It, it almost seems like Dennis didn't even really care about the, the charges. He wanted to get his message out about the sanctuary and his message of peace and kindness. That seemed to be his whole reason of being there. Maybe in not so much speaking to the state or the, to the, the little man in the black dress, the frilly dress, but uh, maybe he was speaking to the other people in there. Maybe that's the message he was trying to get across. Who knows? But he walked in there saying he was innocent, and the judge dismissed it within 60 seconds. And that's the power of correct sentence structure and correct volition. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to join this uh, channel's membership, you can hit that join button over there. If you go to the main page, there are two tiers. You can check those out. If you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address that's been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And uh, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and we can talk about it. Or you can check out the 400 plus videos on this YouTube channel 
uh, that I have invested thousands of hours in creating my gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thanks for joining me.